Okay, welcome to another tutorial video. As you can see, we're going to go over two very common features in leverage buyouts and leverage buyout models here, the management rollover and the management option pool. So we've previously featured quite a few LBO models and related concepts in this channel, but now we actually have a dedicated private equity modeling course specifically focused on LBO case studies of all types and many common features in LBO models. So this is an excerpt from that course and this video specifically will cover two frequently confused features, rollovers and option pools. You can get this in written form and the Excel files and PDFs via the link in the pinned comment or in the next slide. Now, the link here is quite long, so I will just pin this as the first comment under this video and you can click it and access everything like that. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna start by giving you a quick three minute summary of the topic and show you a few basic calculations in Excel. Then we'll talk about how the IRR differs and how these different features affect it differently. Then I will show you a more complex way to implement these features in a model that is based on the actual share or option counts. And then we'll talk about whether this more complex method actually matters or whether you can just stick to the basic one in LBO modeling tests. So here's the three minute summary. Both of these structures are incentives for the management team in a deal to perform well and make the deal successful. The difference is that in a rollover, the existing management team takes some or all of their existing shares that they already own and they keep those shares. So it reduces the private equity firm's required equity contribution in the deal. In the exit, it's a proportional split. So if the management team owns 10% and the PE firm owns 90% upfront, the management team gets 10% in the exit, the PE firm gets 90% in the exit, and the IRRs and multiples are the same for both of them. Now, if there's an option pool, the team gets nothing upfront and contributes nothing upfront, but if the deal performs well, management can exercise their options and effectively get discounted equity in the exit. The option pool reduces the private equity firm's returns and increases the management team's returns because of this discount they get. To implement this in Excel, you have to start with the sources and uses schedule and you have to go in and add a management rollover right here. So I have up a very simple model on screen and what we can do is go to the uses side first and subtract the amount of debt that's being used to fund this deal. This tells us the amount of equity that we need and then we can multiply by the 20% management rollover that we're assuming in this case. Then the investor equity is just the total uses minus the sources so far. And this gets us our total uses down here. And then at this stage, we can plot out the ownership of each of these groups. This is fairly simple because it should just be a 20%, 80% split based on the assumption right above. So that's the first step in setting this up. The next step is that you have to calculate the exit enterprise value and exit equity value. And to save some time, I've already done this at the bottom of the model. We're just basing this on a simple EBITDA number and a multiple of EBITDA and subtracting the net debt to get to the exit equity proceeds. Step three is to assume that the management team pays their option pool percentage times the initial total equity, and then they get back the option pool percentage times the exit equity value. So essentially this works if the exit equity value is greater than the initial total equity, meaning that the company's per share value has increased in this deal. And that's the whole point of this type of options pool. The first thing that we're gonna do is check the exit equity proceeds and make sure they are actually an increase over the initial total equity, 373 million. If they are, then we can go up and take the percentage right here, 10%, and then multiply by the initial total equity, and that's how much they're paying to exercise their options. If this is not true, we'll just say zero, and I will anchor both of these so these do not shift around if we copy this across. And then for the equity to management options, here we just check to see whether they actually exercise their options. So if this is greater than zero, and if it is greater than zero, we take the exit equity proceeds and then multiply by the 10% right here. So they pay to get 10% based on the initial equity contributed and they get back 10% of this exit equity value at the end. And I should put a negative sign in front of this as well. And then I can sum these up. And so we have that. Then we can split the rest based on the rollover percentage. So this is pretty simple. We just have our exit number right here. And then we multiply by the 20% rollover percentage here, or I could take it from here. It doesn't really matter, they're the same number in either case. You can then sum this up, we have that. And then for the net proceeds to management, we can sum up everything here. And then we can also add the management rollover proceeds right here. And we are done and we have now set this up. 
That's pretty much it for the simple version of this. I wanna go into this next topic and talk about the impact of these features on the internal rate of return in the deal. If you just have a rollover, there is no IRR impact because it's a proportional contribution and a proportional distribution of proceeds at the end upon exit. Let's go back into Excel and look at a quick and simple example of that. So let's say that we just remove the option pool and I set this to 0%. If we go down and look at all these numbers, the IRR and multiple are exactly the same for the management team and for the sponsor, the private equity firm right here. It's a proportional contribution. They contribute 20%, they get back 20% at the end. So that is very simple. Now, if you have a rollover and an option pool, in this case, the management IRR is gonna be higher because of the fact that they get discounted equity. So if I change this to 10% and go down and look at this, you can see it right here. The management team gets IRRs between 23% and 29%, but the private equity firm gets IRRs between about 16% and 18 or 19%. Meanwhile, the project level IRR ranges from between 18% to 20 or 21%. So this one shifts it significantly. And then if you just have an options pool, I'll show you what happens. We'll actually get an error in Excel for this one, but let's say that we remove the rollover completely. We just have an options pool. In this case, it doesn't make sense to even calculate a multiple IRR for management because they don't contribute anything upfront in the beginning. Now they do get this bonus payment at the end in the form of these options, but you can't really calculate an IRR based on this because this is a one-time event. It's not an investment that takes place over a period of several years. So that is a little bit about how all these different features impact the IRRs and multiples here. Let's now go into the more complex method and discuss this. In more complex models, you will often calculate the share count in the deal and look at the actual shares owned by each group and the options owned by each group and then use them in the exit calculations. This is more precise and more accurate, but it also adds some complexity to the model. Now, if you're doing something like this, you have to start with the offer price per share in the initial deal because this is usually assumed to be the exercise price for the options granted to management as well. So let's go back to Excel. I have another tab here, share underscore version, and I've plotted out everything here, or at least everything that we're going to need in this example. We change the scaling to match the other sheet. So in this case, the purchase equity value is 550 million, the share count is 55 million, so the offer price per share is $10. That's step one of this process. Now step two and step three, we have to calculate the basic share count and the diluted share count. So let's go down and do that. For the post deal basic shares, we're going to take the total equity contribution right here, and then divide by the implied offer price per share of $10. So 37.3 million basic shares. And then for the diluted shares, we have to remember that this option pool is added after the deal takes place. And so it's going to dilute both the management rollover investors and also the private equity firm. We can gross up the share count by dividing by one minus the 10% options pool right here. And now we have 41.4 million shares for the total diluted share count. Now, the next thing you normally wanna do is list the fully diluted ownership for all the groups involved in this deal. So for the management options, for example, we wanna take the post deal diluted share count and then subtract the basic shares. And this will tell us how many new potential shares correspond to these options. For the management rollover, here we just take the ownership percentage and multiply by the basic share count. And we'll copy this down add these up and then we can look at the ownerships based on this. And we have that. It's a little bit annoying how I created name cells here because then we couldn't copy down this formula, but no big deal either way. And you can see directly how this management options pool has diluted the rollover holders by about 10% and also the sponsor by about 10% because they fall from 80% to 72% ownership on a fully diluted basis. Now for the next steps in this process, we actually need to go down to the bottom where we have the exit calculations. The basic idea here is to say that if the options are in the money, then management is going to pay the option count times the exercise price. And we have to think about circular references as well. If the options are exercised, then we distribute the exit share price times the option count to management. And then the rollover proceeds here will be based on the rollover share count times the share price. So let's go to Excel and see how to implement all that. The first thing I'm gonna do here is look at the share price and the exit. And if this is greater than the offer price, which we had up at the top, the $10, then we're going to take the management option count and multiply by this offer price. This is what they pay to exercise the options. Otherwise, I'll say zero. 
Now, you might think that this looks okay, but the issue is that this is going to end up creating a circular reference because whether they exercise the options or not depends on what the share price is versus the exercise price on the options. Therefore, if we want to build a more robust formula, we want to handle the case where going up to the top, maybe we have circular references disabled and we don't want them in our model at all. So if that's the case, let's go back here and let's say that if circular references are enabled, we can calculate it this way, but then if they are disabled, then we can simply look at the exit equity proceeds right here. And if this is greater than the total basic equity in the beginning, we will take the options and multiply by the offer price per share. Otherwise, I'll say zero. And let's see, I had some type of error in this Excel formula. And okay, I see the problem. I forgot an if statement right around there. So let me just add that to fix it. Right now, the share price is blank. So it's a little bit useless, but let's keep going with these formulas and I'll show you what happens here in the end. For the equity to management options here, we do a similar check. If the options are exercised, then we take the share price and exit. We multiply by the management option count. Otherwise I say zero. And then we can add up everything here. For the management rollover proceeds, we just take the share price and the exit and multiply by the number of shares they have, which is a named cell all the way up at the top. And then we can sum up everything here and we can copy this over. And then now to actually get the share price in the exit. So here you have to be careful because when you are doing it like this, you have to realize that by exercising the options, the management team actually expands the equity pool. Therefore, the share price in the exit equals the exit equity proceeds plus the cash from the management options. And then if these options are exercisable, so if this, is, if this cash proceeds amount is greater than zero, we want to go up and use the diluted share count of 41.4 million. But if not, we want to use the basic share count of 37.3 million right there. And so we have that and we copy this across. Now, if you are getting an error message in Excel, you'll want to go to options, alt T O or command comma on Mac, go to formulas, and then make sure that enable iterative calculation series checked. This will support circular references in the model. We get a circular reference here because the share price depends on the exit equity proceeds and the cash from management options, but the cash from management options depends on the share price and how it compares to the exercise price of the options or the offer price right here. So we get a circular reference and there's no real way to resolve it other than by using the simple approximation and just comparing the exit equity value to the initial total investor equity right here. If you look closely at these numbers, you'll see that we pretty much get the same numbers that we do in the simplified version. In fact, they're exactly the same, the net equity value to investors and also the IRRs and multiples right here. So there's no numerical difference with anything we're looking at here. It's just a completely different method of calculating this. And that really takes us into the last part. Does the more complex method matter? The short answer is no, not really, but it is a bit more accurate and closer to real life. It's really the most helpful in borderline cases where the options are sort of close to being in the money or out of the money, and it could go either way depending on some very small differences. The issue is that in most LBO scenarios, that's not really common. Usually the options are in the money if the deal does even somewhat well, because the exit equity value is almost always higher than the initial equity invested into the company. If it is a completely disastrous deal, then the options will not be anywhere close to being in the money. So you normally don't have this scenario, but this is one case where it could help. The main benefit is that it just presents a more realistic view of what happens. But if you are pressed for time in a case study or modeling test, I don't think you need to do this. I think it is perfectly fine to use the very simple method that we went over here. This is perfectly fine. It's not completely accurate, but it still gets you about the same numbers in the end and pretty similar results overall. So to summarize, in short, a rollover is a proportional contribution of equity in the beginning and then a proportional distribution of the proceeds at the end. It doesn't change the IRR. So the management team and the PE firm have the same IRR. An option pool is more of a discounted equity option for the management team. They get that equity in the exit with the discount and therefore their IRR tends to go up and the private equity firm's IRR tends to go down. With the rollover versus option pool IRR, it's what I just stated. The rollover doesn't affect it, but the option pool does. So if you have both these, you will see a higher IRR than normal for the management team. If you just have an options pool, it doesn't make sense to even discuss the IRR because there is no upfront contribution from the management team. 
With the share and option count method for these structures, as you saw, it is a fair amount more complicated and it is more accurate because when a pool of options like this gets created, it does expand the total equity. And in the exit, it also expands the equity pool available, but ultimately you do get to almost the same numbers. And unless the options are very close to not being in the money, it's probably not going to make much of a difference here. It's good to know about this more complex method and to be able to analyze share and option counts, but I don't think it's super important for case studies. And if you're pressed for time, you can always simplify. That's about it for this lesson. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about these types of incentive structures and how to use them in LBO modeling tests and case studies.